This is the mayor of Metro City, Cody Travers, and you're watching the Infinite Ammo Syndicate podcast. Bingo! Infinite Ammo. All right, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Infinite Ammo Syndicate podcast, and before I begin, let me introduce y'all to the one, the only, the voice of the mayor of Metro City, Cody, Mike T. Coleman. How how you doing today, sir? <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> Just living in smoke. <laughs> oh, man. Hope your family's safe, man. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's just you can't go outside. <laughs> but I mean, we haven't yeah. really been outside for months, so whatever. Yeah, I hope the air quality is not uh, not as bad as... We're not uh, fire. We actually did a few years have fires in our hills. But... <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, let me introduce you all to who I'm with. Other than Michael T. Coleman, we got Andre. Yo, howdy, my name is Henri B. Venom, and we are going to interview the mayor of Metro City. And also we got Sir Brandel. Hi, I'm, I'm new. I'm a victim of circumstances. What the? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and last but not least, the one and only, the one who made the Infinite Ambo Syndicate as it is today. Renegade Operative. Hello, people. How's it going? Hopefully we have a really good, fun, and interesting time talking to Michael. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. And to begin this, I would like to ask you th this interview. Um, can you tell the audience about yourself and your roles within voice acting? Oh, geez. Um... Uh, uh, well, I've been, um, oh man, I'm about myself. I know nothing about myself. Um, <laughs> my name is Mark. Uh, yeah, I've been, um, uh, doing voice acting by accident, I guess, um, for about, ooh, 10 years or so. I, um, I'm actually been doing commercial acting out here in Los Angeles. Sorry about my voice, by the way, which is ironic. We're doing a thing about voice actors and I have no voice. So, uh, I apologize in advance. It sounds oh, no, it's fine, man. We're actually doing a show later tonight, and I'm like, well, I'm screwed. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so I've been out here in L.A. since about 2001. Uh, before that, I lived in Japan for a few years, and then uh, went to school in Boston before that, and then Florida and uh, Connecticut. Uh, so I'm from the East. Basically, I've lived on every East Coast. I've been out here for almost 20 years, and I still think the uh, water is East and that West is inland, so I'm constantly getting lost. Um, as far as voice acting, uh, yeah, I started that uh, because I actually, it's a long story. I had a, uh, a podcast, I still do, called uh, Tales of the Extraordinary. Um, and I got a friend of mine who was a voice actor, Taliesin Jaffe. And he became the uh, director for Street Fighter. And so he started auditioning all of us from the show. Um, so half the cast of Street Fighter is actually from Tales of the Extraordinary. That's a fun little fact. Um, and then all of a sudden I've been doing things in, um, every time there's a new Street Fighter game with Cody, um, I'm also Tundra Man in, uh, Mega Man 11, um, other random games that I don't think anyone remembers, uh, or trailers for games. Oh yeah, Sa Samurai Basada, if anybody ever saw that game, uh, I'm all through that. Um, I think we know a friend, yeah. I'm sorry What's to that? interrupt, I, I think we know a friend who's probably into Samurai Basura. Nice. Yeah. I'm uh, every follower of Zavi, if that means anything. <laughs> <laughs> you attack this one base of this. Uh, this is a really weird game because it's based on actual Japanese people, so it's very confusing. But you attack this one base uh, where the leader is, uh, the daimyo is a uh, Christian. And so everyone is just going on and on about how amazing and great he is, but it, they're all me. It's just me being one character. It was really weird. All right. So um, I I'm sure things will come oh, back to me when I'm when we're talking. <laughs> all right. Uh, I could, let me ask you a, a quick question. How's it like in Japan for a couple of years? Oh man. Um, oh, I always say it's just like here, except everyone's Japanese. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I lived in the boondocks, so it was very. Uh, uh, okay. I would say white trash, but Japanese trash? No, that's not it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was I actually like just. I found my old um, 
uh, one of my old photo albums, and I was like, I gotta get rid of this. I've, for the past three days, I've been scanning all these old photos, and uh, so I'm in that mindset right now. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, Renegade, would you mind taking the next question? Sure, no problem. What motivated you to pursue a career as a voice actor? <laughs> um, well, mainly I've. Oh man, I've I've been acting forever. Um, actually, it's kind of funny. Uh, we started in to me in uh, seventh grade. We did a uh, a play. It was a uh, I think it was Our Town, but what we did is we turned all the lights out and it was all just our voices. So we read from the scripts and there was no staging. It was all just voiceover. Um, and then, uh, I mean, I did uh, theater all throughout college. I did a, put on a Clive Biker, Barker play, uh, History of the Devil. Um, then uh, went to Japan, did some things there. I couldn't do a whole lot of acting because of, uh, I actually had a job as a teacher. And uh, I've only got called on a couple things and they thought I lived so too far away, so they never called me. Um, and then I came back here, moved to Los Angeles, did, you know, your typical acting things. It's a, it's a sickness I have, I guess is the, the answer. Um, I'm a whore. So I, uh, I feed off of the, uh, uh, acceptance of others. Yeah. So I do a lot of live shows, been doing improv. We should do a thing in improv, uh, called radio theater, which we would again, turn out the lights, get, the, get a suggestion from the audience for the name of a radio show. And then we'd all just stand in the dark and do just our voices and create a radio show that way. So when I did Tales of the Extraordinary, um, which started as a screenplay, but it sounded better when the actors talked. Uh, and I realized I can put a laser on top of the Eiffel Tower on a radio show. So we started uh, doing that as a podcast. And um, yeah, pretty much took off from there. Uh, I didn't even realize it was a, a big thing because I mainly just do, like like I said, commercial and theater. So uh, until we went to the the um, Street Fighter, uh, was it Super Street Fighter 4 release party? Like I did it and it was like months later until we had the party and I showed up and I was like, oh, holy crap, people still remember Street Fighter. This is awesome. And I, I met some of the kids from uh, kids from uh, Street Fighter High because uh, I'd just seen them on uh, io9 the day before. And I was like, are you from Street Fighter High? I'm Cody. And they're like, oh, can I get a picture with you? I'm like, can I get a picture with you? And then they did Street Fighter High, the musical, and I popped in and did a little cameo on that. And then now I just hang out with them all the time. Um, and then, yeah, mainly the guy who did that calls me back to do other things like the Mega Man. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Mainly I blame Taliesin. That's what I do in all my interviews. I just say it's his fault. Alrighty, um, Andre, would you take the next question? Uh, question number three, okay. Um, if you had the opportunity to audition for one dream role, then which character would you like to be? Tell us why that role caters to your ambition I want to, if I want to audition for any one, uh, any role, like any game or. Yep, any yeah. game, any character. Any game, anything you want, really. Oh, man. <laughs> I know, like, I'll be playing games and I actually do. I'll be like, we were just finishing Last of Us 2, and I sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, I, oh, I would like to do that. That would be great. Um, oh, man. I'm going to let you down because I can't think of it. Uh. <laughs> I know I'll be watching a cartoon later and I'll be like, that, I want to do that. There have been a lot of things like I'll audition for and then I'll see it on TV and, or on a game and I'll be like, oh man. Um, oh, maybe, no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Man, I just, I like Street Fighter. <laughs> um, probably Street like Fighter. a Marvel game would be good. Actually, that's right. I auditioned for a game. I think it might have uh, turned out to be like Ultimate Alliance or something. They didn't tell us at the time. But uh, I really like doing like uh, like Hawkeye was a fun character um, just for the auditions. So yeah, a Marvel game. That's what I would like to do. So then I could uh, brag and point and be like, that's me. My friend Erica, uh, Erica Ishii does a character in the new Marvel Avengers. And so she just mm -hmm. posted it the other day. She's like uh, uh, Amadeus Cho's sister. And she's like, I'm part of the Marvel and that's when I was like, oh, that's a goal. Oh, man. So now that's my current goal. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I think she's uh, awesome, Kate dude. Bishop and uh, Avengers Hawkeye's daughter, is it? I'm not sure. I think it was more of a apprentice. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's totally. Project, she's yeah. not even related in oh, any way. Okay. Okay. I read the original uh, Young Avengers. She's just a huge fan of his and was a rich girl that was really good at like archery so she took up his mantle 
So she's kind of like Miss Marvel in a sense when she's fangirling over yeah. Hawkeye. And then yeah. they had their own series and they bonded and now they, they're like, he kind of became like a father figure. Yeah. I know way too much about comics. So. <laughs> That's actually a good thing. That's awesome. Actually, oh, yeah, no. My side's uh, question. Yeah. Uh, what was the jump from voicing Cody in Super Street Fighter 4 to Street Fighter 5 like? Do you be open to voicing Cody more in the future? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing, yeah, it was, what, a f when did they make us do that? Um, that was eight years, right? That was like a big eight-year jump I from the original. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it, it even do. Yeah, can you notice any difference? Um, if you if you listen to them back to back, like yeah. I think I sounded. Yeah. I I know like when um when you compare Cody's look in Street Fighter Four to Five, you you can kind of tell like in Four he was like a prison comic, but in Five he's kind of more like the mayor now. He's more he's a bit more dignified, but he's still the same Cody we all know and love. You know, he's just more in like a higher position in life. Yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, also, I yeah, I aged, so I guess I sounded more mature. Um, <laughs> I did like in the years in between, just like meeting with fans uh, and such, and like seeing online like people posting like their favorite quotes and things like that. When when I got to revisit certain quotes, I was just like, oh, I could do this a different way now. Um, although bingo is always bingo, but uh, but I know when we did, I think it might have been five. Yeah, I was like. Look, everybody wants me to make prison jokes. Can we get one? Like, I know the Taliesin was always trying to get things in there. But uh, another, other people were like, I love it when the original Japanese guy says, take it. And so I was like, can we do take it? Uh, take it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I got to throw, I got a bit more, like, leeway with things I could throw in. So that was nice. Oh, nice. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> the best part is, um, I don't know if it's the best part. Listening, in, when you do these things, you, you listen to the Japanese track first. And you have to try to fit it in the same time frame. So sometimes the translations aren't always right. But a lot of times I get distracted because I'll know. Sometimes I know what they say. I'm not that great. But I'll hear what they say and I'll kind of laugh. And I'll, I'll accidentally kind of copy what they were doing. And then they'll be like, no, no, no. No, that's, that's not what we wrote. Can you do this? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Ah, crap. Sorry. Um, so that can be a bit confusing. Um, but that's just me. And then you get to, I get to look through the booth window and see, like, as they try to fit my words without making me sound weird. And they're like, nah, do it again. You were too slow. Or nah, you were too fast. So I've gotten better oh, at that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, dude. Um, you did a great job as Cody. Like, I, he's, um, I don't know. I always love loved Cody as a character. Like, I just love his personality. I love his look and his fighting skills was really cool. Like, he just straight up bare knuckle brawler. He uses like he's knives. Always street fighter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we always joke. It's yeah. like he's he's the street fighter. He's street fighter. He's the only guy that oh, yeah, actually picks stuff true, up man. and throws just... it. That's actually like a giant meme. He's the only street fighter in Street Fighter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love it. He's got to kick dirt in someone's eyes, man. He's got to kick yeah. you know? And he's the only character who uses pipe as a baseball bat. Oh, yeah, play ball. Play ball. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man, my son went and is me. I just remembered for Halloween two years ago. So I made him a, a like poster board on a stick, and it had, like, you know, life meter and, like, a picture and his name. And he just walked around just, like, doing the whole, like, shuffle forward thing. Yeah. But he couldn't bring knives. I was trying to get him to, like, bring a weapon, but they wouldn't allow it. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, maybe he can, maybe he can punch the tornado though. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, he's got ADHD. He's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he has his headphones on. Some sure they're just talking crap about it. Alrighty, uh, Brandon, can you take the next question, sir? What number is it? Um, four. Four. <clears throat> Do you have any other voice actors that you appreciate in the industry? Like um, any personal favorites, any inspiration, you know, stuff like that. Oh, um, I know a bunch of them. They're all in Street Fighter. Um, <laughs> no, well, I mean, everybody loves, of course, a Troy Baker, and uh, I put, again, I played a lot of Last of Us, so that's my problem. But I love, um, you know, I'm I'm been very excited about Ash, Ashley Birch. Um, we uh. Right before she became a voice actor, we, we did a like a School of Thrones 
uh, web series, which is like Game of Thrones in uh, um, high school. So we hung out there, and I was been like surprised. I kind of just stopped um, uh, keeping up with her. But then, um, what was it? Horizon Zero Dawn came out, and I was like, oh my god, she's amazing. That's Ash. This is great. Um, so I was very impressed by her. She's she's totally yeah, someone to look up to. She really gets like she feels like a person, like a three three dimensional character. Um, there's just the way she's the way she reads the lines and the things she says. Uh, I love Kyle LeBear, uh, who does Ru, um in Street Fighter. He's just his voice is amazing. Uh, we uh, we've been doing a lot of um, what do we do? A few couple months ago, we started for fun this um, script reading thing, which is what we're doing tonight. Where we'll take a Hollywood movie and we'll gender swap the characters, uh, just to usually mainly to showcase like the terrible roles that actresses have in movies. Um, but we did Goldeneye, for example, and so I got I roped Kyle into it, and Kyle I made him do uh, Zena on the top if you're familiar with the movie, just because I thought it'd be hilarious to hear him like orgasm every time he's fighting somebody, because he just got this deep manly voice. So, uh, <laughs> that was way too early. He was just constantly just going like, oh, yes. um, that's funny. Basically, it sounded like Zangief, which was disturbing. But yeah, he's always like his calm voice is always just so like you know sex phone voice or something he's always got this sort of manliness to it <laughs> so i'm calling him out <laughs> oh, are you calling zangief out or no <laughs> i'm calling calling kyle out oh well you yeah. better watch out kyle, kyle. yeah <laughs> aka go gohan <laughs> he could take me oh man he has to bust out the kamehameha on you <laughs> Watch out, watch out, pipe, you know? watch out for his, uh, his mystic transformation. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got pictures of me beating the crap out of him for this stupid little short film we did once. So I'll, uh, I'll use that as blackmail. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question is, have you ever been to any big fan conventions? If not, do you have any plans to try them out after, you know, COVID is over? Yeah. Um, well, we went to amazing, um, um, what's it called? amazing Comic Con in uh, Hawaii with a bunch of other Street Fighters and Tales guys, and then we went to Vegas um, and Comic Con. They called me in for San Diego Comic Con two years ago after Street Fighter Five, so that was a highlight. That was a hashtag goals <laughs> Um Other than that, I I keep forgetting about Evo. Um, which is really annoying. I meant to go like two years ago. I didn't really pressure them enough. Uh, another guy, uh, Bill Rogers, he was telling me what to do after that. He was like, uh, no, 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 here's what you do. You call him and you do that. Like he told me how to get into it. And I was like, oh man, all right. Mm. But then I just, I'm an idiot. I keep forgetting. Which sucks because ah. there's this, there's a fan from Hawaii who made these amazing body pillows with um, Cody, like, you know, she draws really amazing Cody fan art. And on one side, she's got him, like, in bed, like, you know, with sexy pose. And on the other side, in, like, his mayor outfit, also sexy pose. And so she was selling those at Evo. And I was like, oh, man, I wish I had gone. I could have just hung out at the booth and been like, buy these pillows. But no. I don't know if that answers your question. I have no plans because I don't know what's going on with cons. But once they're back up, then, yeah, I'll start harassing people. Hopefully my voice will be back. <laughs> I'd be nice so to have like a Street Fighter panel, you know, just all the actors. That'd be nice. Yeah, we did um, for the amazing Comic Con. We got oh, uh, a couple of us. It was me, Talison, uh, Chris Rickabaugh, who does uh, Sean in the cutscenes. He's still annoyed by that. He's like, when are they going to Sean? Oh, man. <laughs> he's so <laughs> every be for like five years, he's been like watching me and like Bonnie and other people in it. And he's like, I'm, I'm, they're going to, they'll get to, they'll get to me. They'll get to me. <laughs> um but we had us three bonnie who does um mika is that it armika yeah, um, I yeah. Love Armika. and then we had a guy from street fighter cross tag oh she's amazing what's weird is it looks like her like that's what she looks like in real life so <laughs> really yeah. um and yeah oh it was funny because it was just as like critical role was taken off it was only a few years ago so we were all like you know hey come to street fighter booth but everybody just walked up to talison and they're all just like you changed my life. Thank you so much. And we're all like, what? <laughs> so, and then we haven't seen him since then. But yeah, we, uh, 
we try we we try to grow around and because we're all in tales then we'll do like a tales of extraordinary show panel like afterwards and get the audience involved so if you know anybody uh tell them we'd like to come <laughs> all righty um renegade can you take up take on the next question give me one second let me pull up the document real quick which question is that number six I Yes. Okay. As a professional voice actor, are you a fan of film, theater, or television? Did it influence your career personally? Ooh. Can I go with all? I always get asked that by, like, my agent or whatever. Like, do you want to do more, like, film or, or theater? I'm like, why not both? Um, I'd say I was influenced by theater because that's what I started with. Improv, actually. Um, I started with theater, did, like, directing courses. Um, like I said, um, did a lot of plays. Oops, those are my shoes. In college, and um, what I, I I when I first came into LA, I was like, screw theater, I'm gonna go with film. I love film because it's I don't have to memorize an entire play for one. Uh, you can just do like sections. I feel like you can be more creative with it. Um, and then I went and I did a a thing at Oxford, like a summer theater uh, Shakespeare program. And then I came back from that and I was just like, no man, theater, theater is where it's at. Um, and that's actually what I like about voiceover is, um, well, first of all, I can read off the papers so I don't have to memorize because <laughs> um, I'm terrible at that. And it's that you, um, I don't know, there seems to be a lot more theatricality to it. Um, you just can, because a lot of times they don't just have, like, for example, Cody, they'll have, okay, can you also do uh, this minor character over here? And uh, we have a giant snake over here. Um, and uh, can you just do something real quick? And it's it's great to just come up with a character real quick and and be like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, that's got a very theater flow to it. But mainly, I'd say my biggest my biggest love is improv. That's what I've been doing for like ugh, 30 years. Just because, for example, just like I said, um, if you need to come up with something on the fly, you've got something. A lot of the characters I do um, uh, when I audition or that for Cody and, um, and other games are from uh, characters I fleshed out doing improv and um, like long form improv or shows or sketch shows. So I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing that's influenced me. Yes. There's your long answer. That's a very beautiful, why black. really good answer. That's a very beautiful, long answer. <laughs> uh, Manjay, uh, can you take on the next question? Right. Gotcha. Um, uh, number seven. Yeah. Okay. What are typical mistakes that you can make regarding voice acting? Oh, what are some? Sorry, say that again. Uh, what are typical mistakes that you can make regarding voice acting? Ooh, wow, a lot. Um, the biggest, I, I'm a, I'm, I feel like kind of an asshole sometimes because I'll, when I'm playing a game, I'll be like, oh man, that was you did not read that right. Um, that that gets me the most. Maybe I, I think because I've been doing the the tales show for like so long, I'm I'm so used to listening. Because I we what we do is we do the show. A lot of times we do it like in a live audience. I I then take the recordings and I edit it all down to like 25 minutes. So I'm always like listening and critiquing like what the actors are doing. Like even during the show, I'm like no 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 read that again. So uh, when I'm playing a video game, I'm real critical of other people, which I feel like a jerk for. Um, <laughs> Even in, in Last of Us 2, I know a, a character said a line, and I was like, why? No, no, that's not it. You're not. It's really hard to, if you don't know, maybe through secrecy, or maybe you just you just don't know, like what the context of a line is, um, that really can can ruin your, your reading of it. Like, you think you're reading it this way, and then, like, you'll play the game, and you're like, oh, my God, I was doing that? Oh, crap. And it sounds totally different. Like, you stress the wrong word or things like that. That's the hardest part is just not having something there um, to tell you. Sometimes the directors are really good and they're like, we're going to play you a clip so you know what your character is and what's going on. And I'm like, oh my God, that'd be great. Thanks. Um, like for Tundra Man, for Mega Man 11, I don't know. I think maybe I had a picture. <laughs> but um, while they were always like, be flamboyant. I'm like, okay. So that's the hardest thing. And uh, that's the biggest mistake is just not not having the right context, I guess. Yeah, because um, actors can be their biggest critics, you know? Like, when you get, yes. like, really big into voice acting, you kind of, like, you kind of look at your work and you're like, eh, I could have done better. Or, I, I, oh, I'm I terrible, like yeah. I 
I can't even, I have a, I have a commercial out that's been out for like a few months. And for some reason, people think it's good. I guess, I don't know. They maybe they're just calling me because they, they want to say hi, but they're like, Hey, great job. I'm like, you're a liar. Cause I saw the commercial and I'm terrible, but I think it's only me. <laughs> All righty. Um, Brandel, question number eight. Uh, number eight. Yes. Um, how does it feel? How do you feel about screaming in voice acting sessions? For example, <laughs> uh, Sean, Sean Schemmel had passed out during a session and during his recording of Dragon Ball GT, which he won Super Saiyan 4. Uh, wow. Have you ever like partaken in anything like that before? Uh, wow, no, I have never heard that. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, no, but it's it's a well known uh, problem that we all have, um, especially in big big games where you're doing like you know a, a book thick of uh, script. Um, I think a friend of mine was in uh, Knights of the Old Republic, or whatever the the online one, the huge one, and yeah, yeah. He, he was like they have to take breaks you have to do it uh, i don't know if you, I, I assume you've heard this you have to uh, schedule those for like fridays so that you don't work during the weekend and your voice can recover by monday so that's when they usually hold off on those um that is almost always at the end of a session so everybody because everybody knows your your voice is screwed Talison especially his voice would be messed up for days we do you guys know about hulk juice has anyone told you about that uh, no, heard never heard of it before. Hold on, I'm gonna go grab a bottle. Oh, this is oh, gonna boy. be interesting. <laughs> if you turn to the Hulk on on air, that'd be a win. <laughs> yeah, I know. So there's this. Okay, here's a, this is our secret. It's uh, okay. It's a, it's a Chinese cough syrup. <laughs> oh, Chinese oh. cough syrup. Ninjom Pei Pa Kao. Um. It's if you just look up Chinese cough syrup, it usually comes up. But basically, the guy doing the Hulk for uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, um, he was the Hulk. So obviously, he was uh, shredding his voice all the time, and he would use this. And then I guess he passed that on to Talison. He passed that on to all us in the uh, everything Street Fighter and everyone else that we know. And uh, so sometimes we'll actually go into a booth and it'll like be sitting there, and we'll know that one of us has been here recently. Um, but that's that's everyone's secret is just downing Hulk juice. Um, especially when you ra ravage your throat. That's my plug. <laughs> I see. But yeah, none of us has ever passed out. It's It's been, I think it's kind of fun just to like finally, you know, to let loose at the end of the thing. Um, sometimes they have to really milk it out of you because sometimes you're like, ah, they're like, no, 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 no. Like, you're dying. You're going, to, like, they just help describe it. Like, no, we're doing like, and it's, I don't know if you're aware, but when you do the screams, it's like, you know, per, um, weak medium and strong button yeah so you, know, you hit and it's just like a ha and they're like all right now do medium you're like ha ha and then they're like do hard and that's when you like Ugh. um or you're you know like oh i got hit oh that really hurt and they're like all right this is your death throw and that's when you're just like Whoa. or my favorite which is a uh, profound sadness i just like shouting that i swear yeah that's the line said by um i forget his name guy yeah, it is God. Yeah. Yeah. Profound, yeah. Profound sadness. Profound sadness. Profound sadness. Man, I got a wish guy was in Street Fighter Five. That would've been awesome. Yes, yeah, so was he. <laughs> I got a picture of him at a Comic Con when we we did a whole group thing, and he came by and he was like, "Will you tell Jonathan? Tell them to put me back in the game." And we're like, "All right, sure." <laughs> uh, the closest thing yeah, we got man. is Zeku. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Really he lives down the street see. too. Oh, nice. Mm. So bump into him. <laughs> I do. I do like a bit of a between Cody and Zeku's, you know, conversation and his backstory. Oh yeah, yeah. That was. I had to have them fill me in on that. <laughs> I really. That's what I really liked about Five. Was like, yeah, it really added a lot more to it. He wasn't yeah. bored all the time, which is also good. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he has an addiction now. I just have oh, to really? fight and kill people. I think it's all, all right. those years of eating turkeys off the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, w I wonder if they're even spoiled. I guess not. No, no, Metro City. We were very clean. He's, he's instituted yeah. a whole streetwide turkey program. 
It seems to be a running, reoccurring thing. First, there's like Metro City turkeys on the street. Then there's Wood Oak City turkeys, like Streets of Rage. There's not as good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Does anyone bring up the fact that he got the job through completely corrupt means? Like the mayor's just like, yeah, I don't want this anymore. You're pardoned and you're mayor. No, there's not a vote. Bye. <laughs> Which explains how he runs into his constituents, and they're like, "You're mayor." There's no I reason. I am the mayor. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what shocked me. Is <laughs> they're like, "Oh, he's a mayor now." It's not like he had a campaign. I mean, <laughs> Hagar was just like, "You're mayor." Bye. I wonder who Hagar is, man. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> I have a side question. If yeah. let's say hypothetically speaking, if Capcom like asked you guys to do like a final fight game, would you be like up for it, offering ideas? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I keep waiting for them to to do that. <laughs> there was talk of like a, bringing a Street Fighter game a few years ago, like eight years ago. Um, oh, sorry, Street Fighter cartoon. We were like, oh, cool. That didn't happen. And then I was like, when are they gonna bring back? Final fight, especially because they they did a whole thing on Cody when he came out for Street Fighter Five, and they made it yes. you know really brought up the whole final fight aspect. And I'm like, so people like the game, you know? So I I I'm, I would say yes. I mean, we're all whores, like I said. So naturally, we're gonna be like, yeah. But I'd be down for it, man. It would just be awesome to see you and Jason just kicking the tail on Metro City. <laughs> oh yeah, he would love it. <laughs> we need that fourth game now. Yes. Yes, I mean, we do. To play that. Oh, and I went nice. to the uh, when I went to the the sorry the uh, the Street Fighter release party. There was a guy that worked at Capcom who was like hardcore Final Fight. He handed me like a, the soundtrack cassette that I don't know why he had it to Final Fight, and gave me a couple buttons from it. And he was just like, "I love Final Fight." I'm like, "Oh shit, okay." <laughs> so I know that they have fanatical fans. Yeah, I gotta listen to more. Final Fight soundtrack after this. Um, uh, the next question is, what was your favorite role to do thus far? I'm pretty sure we already know the answer to this. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll throw in a, a curve. Oh? Uh, <laughs> to do... Oh, yeah, I guess I like Cody. Um, I really enjoyed Tundra Man, just because that was me doing my Frank Inverter from Rocky Horror uh... Picture. I have to ask you a question, but um, have you ever, uh, did you ever play the Mega Man games before you knew you were going to be cast as Tundra Man? Yeah, but again, just like with Street Fighter, it had been so long, um, mm -hmm. in the 90s, <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. I've been keeping up with, you know, all the drama of like, there's a new game, no there's not. Um, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I hadn't actually like, played it in a while, so then I watched it and I was like, oh my god, this is so hard. It was getting like uh, flashbacks, and I was just like, traumatized again so i i didn't it was so hard but i'm gonna make my son do it um <laughs> i have to say probably this is not a popular answer but my favorite character was uh in this, the samurai basura uh only because that's my favorite character that i've always i've been doing for like 20 years this uh like a feat british sort of hello i'm it's a character from our, our tale show. He's a he's a British explorer extraordinaire. And he's just like the the goofiest thing in the world. He sounds like the the Duke from uh, Moulin Rouge. So uh, mm -hmm. when they let me do that through the whole game, like I was like, I get to be Dicky through the whole game. Yeah. E. <laughs> yeah. When I doing really crazy weird characters, like oh, I got to remember this game I was in. I got to look it up now. But I was this giant snake god. Um, or demon or whatever, and I, I just got to do like mm, I like doing this character, so I got to finally oh, do that. God, <laughs> it's always fun voicing like the weird, really weird zany characters. Yes, especially yeah, it's just like do whatever. The thing with Cody is like that's kind of what I slip into normally. So I think when I auditioned, I just did like my usual like Brooklyn esque accent, mm. and, uh, and then I got stuck with it. Now I can't stop doing it. <laughs> Sleep it off. The worst is I do I I cosplay as a uh, Littlefinger because apparently I look like Littlefinger. So if I do that at cons, like for a weekend, like my voice sounds like it does now because I'm constantly talking like this and I can't stop. My Sansa, 
My wife hates it. Hey, man, you become one with your characters, you know? <laughs> oh, you don't yeah. want to come with one of that character, but yeah, it's true. It's a problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. People are like, you're a bad person. Like, I know. Dang. It's cool. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that. Um, <laughs> uh, rank, question number 10. Uh, give me a second. Let's see. Number 10. Are there any future roles that you could potentially talk about to get us excited? If it's under NDA, then we're perfectly fine with discretion. I wish I could say I was under NDA, but uh, no, no, not yet. Not lately. Um, uh, yeah, obviously, there haven't, strangely, haven't been a lot of auditions lately. Um, uh, yeah, no, I've been doing a lot of more like mocap training, so I was trying to get into that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm sad. Sorry. <laughs> you got nothing. It's cool, dude. It's cool. Look, when we <laughs> put like Final Fight 4 on the table, Capcom needs to pick up the ball with that. I know. Because oh, yeah. they, they need... I, I just think that beat em ups are right for the taking after Streets of Rage 4 was so successful. Capcom letting Sega walk over them with that. Yeah, that's yeah, unfortunate, but you, you never know. Maybe one of these days. One of these days. You guys probably know more than I do. Eventually. Um, I actually have to go to IMDb to figure out what I've been doing. <laughs> God oh, really? Wars. That's what it was. Oh, Did really? Yes. Right. Um. Oh no, there was just an update to that, so that wasn't new. No. Oh. Nothing new. <laughs> Rockman. Right. Nope. Yep. Not since like last year. <laughs> Rockman oh, with an actual gun. Yeah. Tundra Man. Um, oh, I did that too. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. Just my commercial was the last thing that came out. And then I got paid and then we, we were all sent into quarantine. Yep. First you can have the computer. Sorry. <laughs> he's running now. He's like, I play video games. It's all good. Yeah. I guess we can move on to uh, number 11 then. Have you ever, well, you kind of answered this a little bit about the full uh -oh. body mocap. So how do you feel oh. about that experience in general? Uh, I support it, if that helps. Um, I work uh, doing stuff with, um, the classes are run with, uh, let's see, one of the heads of uh, Ghidorah. <laughs> uh, Richard Dorton does a lot of things. and they have like an international program. Like there's an English group and the group here in LA, they have a whole summit every summer. Uh, they use an entire actual like mocap studio. We get actual people from the computer side, from the rendering and modeling side um, to work at the exact same time during the summit, doing animatics and just seeing how that's done is uh, pretty amazing. Um, Cause you can, you can see while you're doing things, like everything's just put up, you know, as walls here and everything. Um, with like, you know, just a piece of wood or a line, but you can see sometimes in the cameras in the monitors around you like rough animatics of what you're doing where you are um, I love it just because it's more of an acting experience in the game more physicality as well um, And now especially with the facial uh, Capture which is um, I think that's the last thing I did was like a facial capture testing uh, me and Bonnie and just the, the getting more facial expressions out of those has been fun. So I fully support it, especially if you can get both the, the mocap and voice actor uh, for it. I think that's what Ash was doing. And uh, another friend of mine's in the new Transformers Cybertron um, doing both of those. She's also really good with mocap. But I think I think it's good that they, yeah, if they can marry them both together, um, if possible. Is that the right answer? <laughs> do people not like mocap? Is that a, is that a? a well, thing? we do have a mocap character as a character for Mortal Kombat. I think that's just a joke character. That's so funny when he comes oh, over. That dude. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. I, love it. I was watching the new, the uh, what is it? Suicide Squad, uh, teaser or whatever, like the quote, quote unquote trailer, the new one, the Suicide Squad. And, oh, um, okay. Oh, there's the cool. character polka dot or whatever and i didn't know that and i was busy going like is that guy running around in a mocap i don't is it gonna are they gonna render him i don't i don't, I don't get it hmm. so for a second i thought that would be hilarious but no <laughs> all right um 
I guess I could take the last question. Um, are there any tips that you would give to people who want to be voice actors, people who are inexperienced as beginners? Ooh, I always pass this on to Mercer. He's the best. Um, he knows everything. You, I would recommend, well, obviously doing a course. Um, I don't know if you're in LA or not. If you, if you have availability to do um, just even like a one-on-one thing on proper, you know, distance from the mic, um, just very simple things, uh, how to get your character out, how to really, really hear yourself. Like it's like you're talking about, like just listening to yourself and critiquing yourself. Um, I, I used to work with a guy who would, you know, tape himself and then watch tapes of himself and just rip himself apart and like, in order to get better. Um, also start your own thing. Uh, that's basically what I did. Um, if you're not, as with any actor, if you can't, if you're not getting anything and you're tired of waiting around and for something to come up, just create your own, uh, show or audio drama. Um, if you're, if you have friends who are good at animation, um, or, uh, uh, CGI type things. Like we, there was a guy over the summer who, or no, since quarantine started, our old sketch troupe got back together, and one of them was like taking a course for something, and he's like, I have an idea for a sketch. Uh, I need voice actors, so we all gave our voices, and within like a week, he like threw something together, and it was just something simple and fun, but you know, just something to get out there and let people hear your voice doing things. Um, yeah, that's my best advice. Uh, create your own thing. The Kevin Smith road to. Uh, success <laughs> awesome um usually we will be si we usually do the sign out but i would like to ask you a few more side questions but please these side questions will be based on the man himself the mayor cody hey. in character uh oh so, <laughs> yeah. okay all right so cody Bingo. what what is it like being a mayor in Metro City? Like, what what have you been doing since you became mayor? Well, there's there's a good side and a bad side. Good side is the power. I can basically do whatever I want. You know, go out, beat people up, get away with it. The bad side is like responsibilities. Like, people keep calling me. They keep wanting things. They want me to do my job. I mean, I got a person. And she handles a lot, but it's ah, uh, I'm not here to work. Just like, like I'm not a I'm not a thinking man. I think with my fist. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I know a lot of characters. Well council. Oh, I know a lot of characters that usually think with their fist. Go. <laughs> yeah, I probably fought the most. All right, and the last question is uh, the last question I would usually ask is uh, you don't mind if you uh. Give us like a proper intro to this uh, podcast, as in your Cody voice. Sure. Well, like, what should I say? Uh, I would say, I would say, this is the mayor of Metro City, Cody, and you're watching the Infinite Ambo Syndicate. Infinite. Hold on, I gotta write this down now. <laughs> oh, you want me to write it down for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that works too. Oh, okay. Good. I've already told you about my horrible memory. Oh, no, it's fine, man. Oh, there we go. I don't know why I have the Mario song, man. Actually, while you're doing that, I actually have a question. I'm not sure yeah. if I'm going to ask or not, though, but um, outside of um, like doing Cody, like, do you have a particular favorite role you've done so far? Whether it's like anime, and I'm sure you do anime, and um, video games? Uh, no. Not, I mean, yeah. again, not on... Yeah, it's mainly my little dicky character. It's my favorite. Character. <laughs> um, so anytime I get a chance to do that, otherwise my other my other stuff's really boring. A lot of like voiceover for like commercials and uh, industrials. <laughs> Have you done uh, any Japanese commercials? Oh wait, no. I auditioned for them, but I did not get them. Oh, one of the yeah, I went in for Netflix to do. They were. But toying with it, I guess they went with it. You know, when you're for for the blind, and you have people that they say what's happening in between the dialogue for the blind, so they they explain what's going on on the the screen. So yeah. I went in for Daredevil. I did like a couple scenes of that in Japanese oh? um, for the Japanese market. That was yeah, random. Yeah. So, but that was just like a test. 
and I don't know if they went with it or not. So that was that was the closest. And I did once at a commercial audition. I heard them. I saw across the way somebody was doing a commercial for Japan, and I'm like, "Can I? Can I audition? I, I speak Japanese." They're like, "Well, you're not the right type, but eh, whatever." So they they let me go in because I, I I hang out there all the time. Uh, totally didn't get it, but that was fun. Oh no, I did. I remember now. Yes, this was a dream come true. I sorry, I got way too excited. Um, so I was a teacher in Japan, and in Japan we use these books. One's called Sunshine, and uh, there's the other one, and um that we use like it's just stupid dialogue with characters like this is a pen oh hello jenny welcome to my town i'm glad to be here like stuff like that so apparently they started making like little you know videos of the dialogue with characters and so they came to to town and i go into audition for this thing and they hand me the script and it's a page from one of those books and i'm just like what the hell and i walk in i'm like i i read from this book for like three years guys (laughs) and uh so i that was the script and so I read the the terrible dialogue, and I got it. And so that was that was one of my my dream shoots was basically bringing it full circle, being in a video for the material that I used to use in school. So there you go. <laughs> I wish I could be in your class. Sounds fun. <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I had a class. I'm gonna. There's another story. I had a class that was like they took all the worst kids. I don't know where they came up with this. Took all the worst kids from the classes and put them in one class. So they didn't have to oh, deal with them. Oh, oh, yeah. It was, terrible, it was a terrible Crazy. idea. And the teacher that was teaching them was like a first-year teacher, and she was very meek. And they would just roll over her. And, uh, and I was a dick. So I would go in there, and they'd try to be all cocky. And I'm like, all right, guys. We're... I'd sit down with them in a group. I'm like, all right, here's the paper. We're doing I like to... And the character, he's trying to be funny. He's like, I like to have sex. I'm like, no, 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 no. I like to have sex, okay? Now say that. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I like to have sex. I'm like, there you go. Right on. <laughs> and the teacher would be like, everything all right over here? I'm like, oh, yeah, we're doing great. Thank you. Bye. Go. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was the cool but strict teacher. <laughs> I think there was an anime based on, you know, a teacher teaching bad kids in one class. Oh, yeah. Muzuka. Yeah, my friend model. Yeah, GTO. That's one of my favorite anime. Yeah. My friend came in the year after me, and his he wrote on the board. He wrote uh, "Great Teacher Adam," and he turned around. and He went "Yuroshka," and he just basically did the opening scene <laughs> from uh, GTO. And his kids were like, <laughs> and then yeah, he memorized the opening to Tengu, so he's he's did the monologue from Tengu in Japanese, and they were like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> gotta educate them. Yeah. So they loved him. All right, I got my dialogue, I got my script. Here we go. Oh, ammo. That makes more sense. All right. This is Mayor. Of, oh, hey. this is the Mayor of Metro City, Cody Travers, and you're watching the Infinite Ammo Syndicate podcast. Bingo. That was perfect. That was beautiful. That was man. beautiful. That was awesome. Loved it. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. All right. All right. <laughs> so that was fun. We're probably gonna go to hell after this interview, but you know, oh. <laughs> it's already hot in Cali, so I guess you're halfway there. But I hope you Where guys. Are you are... guys? Yeah. I'm in the East Coast. Same here. I'm in New York I'm... mostly. I'm in Georgia. <laughs> Nah, I'm in Texas, and it was very wet a couple of weeks ago. Oh, what's that like? <laughs> ah, well, the weather is nice now, so there's that. But... I'm glad that you're safe, though, Brandon. And yeah. you too, Cody. Oh yeah, it's as long as they don't go out at all. Or I, I actually put on a, a like a mask the other day for the smoke, but it's got a valve. So then I put another mask over that for the COVID. So I was double duty. Jeez. Man, that's why I walk around in a hazmat suit. <laughs> yeah, I totally gotta get one. I want one of those. I swear, <laughs> it's like that entire meme I saw of like everything on fire and they were playing the COD Zombies theme. That's crazy. But we're gonna... the, uh, have you... Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, have you seen the side by side of Blade Runner 2049 in San Francisco? I have. They dubbed the theme on San Francisco 2020. San Francisco 2020. There was one where they had the old Warner Bros. logo playing, but it was just a still image, and it's like tw- um, California right now. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. I mean, it's not wrong. 
but we're gonna sign off for this interview we're gonna start doing some outros here so sure. the, the the mayor of metro city uh where can we find you on all social media platforms if anyone's like oh, yeah interested so they can find you uh i'm on the instagram as freaketeer which is like rocketeer and the word freak i'll let you figure that out uh and then on uh the facebook i'm under come to coleman because uh, i'm that guy <laughs> and i have no twitter because i burned it a few years ago uh because it's like a cesspool and then uh and street fighter 5 <laughs> came out and everyone's like hey what's your twitter and i'm like oh crap <laughs> <laughs> No, you did it right then. Yeah. Yeah, I right go thing. in sometimes and look and I go, nope. <laughs> yeah, let yeah. Me, yeah, let me know if Poison comes to interrupt you. I'll take care of you, uh, her for you. Oh, that, that, that's okay. I mean, if you want, I'm sure she could do double duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, she is. But she dresses well. <laughs> All right, so Kaneki, where can we find you, buddy? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube under the same name as Guru War Order. And I think I have the same name on Instagram, but I barely use it. Yeah. Brandle? Hurricane Man? Uh, Hurricane Brandle here. You can find me on Twitter at um, Immortal Brandle. Uh, yeah, that's it for now. Andre. You can find me on Twitter at Honorary B Venom, and yeah, it was a fun podcast. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Renegade Operative, Twitter, Rent Operative underscore, and Instagram. Oh, we at, won't. Yeah, shut up. Uh, Instagram <laughs> at Renegade Operative. Uh, I, I just will be trying to get this interview up on the Infinite Ammo Syndicate channel and just doing random stuff, maybe playing Resident Evil 7 and being scared later on, since people enjoy that, so... Uh, look out for that in the next couple of days. All right, so we're going to sign out for this interview. Once again, this is our interview with Michael T. Coleman, Street Fighter V and Four's Cody Travers. It was good having you once again. And once again, I will see all you guys out there in YouTube land later. Peace out. Ciao, Cody. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>